Henry Benefield. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another exciting program of Let's Talk. As you just heard, Henry Benefield is hosting today about another exciting topic. Listen, I want to welcome everybody again to the program and just reiterate that last uh, uh, broadcast we talked about some important subjects and we promised you update part two. So today we're going to have that program update part two. Uh, we had so much conversation in the community and we're no we were noticing a lot of people in the general public was not talking about the topics we were speaking of and there were a lot of people confused. So what we wanted to do was make sure we got the information to you to help you to make good decisions. Just to reiterate, we talked about Medicare, Medicaid, the differences, the pros and cons of these different types of programs and we wanted to make sure, or coverages, we wanted to make sure that you had information to make good choices. So in lieu of that, we invited back two of our very distinguished guests from the previous programs to go over the new updates that have taken place or the things that are taking place right now that you need to know about, and also to reiterate some of the questions with affirmity of some of the things you wanted to know in the past program. So let me first of all start off welcoming uh, my first guest, you guys see her on the program, she hosts sometimes for uh, Let's Talk, great host, and she's our guest coordinator, which is very um, Grateful to have us on the program today. She is an expert in this field. She works for Crossroads Health Center, and she is just a wellspring of information. Please welcome my very first guest, Miss Leslie Marie Calhoun. Miss Calhoun, thank you. Welcome. The full name. Thank you. Glad to be here. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> We're excited, excited to have you here today because, yeah. again, as I said earlier, you brought a lot of information, and it was important for you to come back today. Okay, glad to be back. Absolutely. And sitting right next to Mrs. Calhoun is the gentleman that is also an expert, an expert in the field of Medicare, Medicaid, and not necessarily Medicaid, but some information to provide for you with specifics to make good choices. This thing is just such a massive, massive, massive uh, process that it becomes overwhelming for folks that don't have information. So we're very grateful that he decided to come out of his closet and, and uh, just give us a little time to be able to, because he works in this space, he's busy, 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 and he has to get that little space, and his wife can't talk to him, and he decided to come with us today to be able to talk about it just for you. So please welcome back to the program, Mr. Robert Renfro. Mr. Robert, welcome back to the program, man. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me back. Hey, man, it is such a pleasure. We know it's been really, really, really busy. So let's get right into discussion. First of all, we talked about what were the differences between Medicaid, Medicare, but since the last time we talked, ladies and gentlemen, there's been some uh, open enrollment that has taken place. I'm going to ask Robert to bring us up to date on some of the things that's happening right now for those of you who may be dealing with these issues and why you should know about what's going on right now. So Robert, I'm going to let you have the floor. Let's talk about what's going on specifically with uh, Medicare. Okay, uh, thank you again. Uh, regarding Medicare, every year there is uh, an uh, open enrollment period, and it runs from October the 15th to December the 7th annually. So that's the time of the year where um, companies can let uh, uh, individuals know what changes are available to their plans, what new benefits are available, and uh, just started uh, just yesterday. So actually those changes really can only be revealed starting in October the 1st, but no one can really enroll uh, as a rule until October 15th to December 7th. Mm -hmm. So that's, a, that's where we are now. It's, a, it's, it's a, analogous to tax seasons for tax professionals. It's, it's open enrollment for Medicare. And again, Medicare is uh, primarily the uh, federal health insurance program uh, for seniors 65 and over and for people with disabilities at any age or, and also for folks who may have uh, end-stage renal, which is kidney disease. So let's tell everybody why this is important to be aware that open enrollment is now active within those dates that you gave us. Well, it's because um, many folks who have an existing plan, uh, there could have been some changes. Uh, changes could be that uh, they could have added um, other benefits, additional benefits. For example, regarding um, Medicare Advantage plans in particular, Medicare Advantage plans are, are all in one plans plans that uh, uh, I call them pay-as-you-go plans. Uh, but those plans also uh, contain multiple benefits uh, in addition to health and your prescription. They, can, they commonly 
contain preventive uh, dental and preventive vision and preventive hearing. So companies can tweak those plans and also the uh, Department of Health and Human Services, the Center for Medicaid and Medicare Services, has uh, opened up the, uh, the door for them to add more health-related uh, benefits. So companies are trying to actually out-innovate each other, which mm. it's good really for the consumer. So one of the things that I uh, has brought to my attention is that people are not aware, you don't have to stay in the current plan you're in now. You have options. Would you like to expound on that? Uh, yes. Um, you may run across the benefit that really turns, makes the difference in uh, changing plans, even though you aren't obligated to change plans as long as you have uh, Part A, which is for, covers the hospital, mm -hmm. and Part B covers the doctors and uh, health providers. That's, that's what original Medicare is. Uh, so one of the most common benefits I run across um, that people may consider changing is maybe they need more dental work. Mm. And some plans cover more dental coverage. Uh, one of the most common ones is actually dentures. Some, some plans mm -hmm. cover dentures, mm -hmm. some don't. Mm -hmm. Some have uh, a large copay if they do cover mm -hmm. uh, dentures or, or, or extensive dental work. Some just give you a flat amount. They might give you, you know, just a few thousand, and that is an annual amount. So even today I was talking to um, a, a client and they were telling me about the plan that they were in uh, for their dental work. And when they got, you can always get a, a, a pre-treatment estimate to, to get some idea what, to, what you might be up against and, and how, how, how deep they're gonna go into your pockets. Mm -hmm. uh, what she so explain a little bit, pre-treatment estimate. You can go to a dentist and you know, like a, a bid, <laughs> basic on what it's going to cost. Uh, yeah, and that's and that's a good thing to do because uh, because you don't know, and that way you can plan and budget better. Sure. Yeah. In her particular case, uh, she needed dentures, and she she was in a plan that had a flat amount, uh, uh, a few thousand dollars for for dental work, including dentures. Mm. And when she found her estimate. Uh, she found out, well, she better get part of it this year so she wouldn't have to pay out of her pocket because the plans, the benefits start all over again January the 1st. Mm. So her annual benefit, she could finish it for this year, and then January the 1st, if she's uh, uh, awake on New Year's and anything's open, she can probably catch the mm. dentist on January the 2nd, wow. but then she can get the full annual amount on January the 2nd without uh, having a, a budget-busting experience mm. <laughs> with, with her dentist. Wow, wow. How, how exciting, because I think it's important. Uh, we talked about on the last program, if you foresee possible treatments or surgeries or something like that, that it is best to look into multiple uh, coverages, and uh, what am I saying the right word? Coverages, multiple uh, yeah. plans, multiple plans, to see whether you actually have a better plan to cover, like somebody may have heart, surgery or something like that. You know, one plan may not have as much in your favor for heart treatment or heart transplant. I'm not saying that, that but if that's the case, to research and find out who has a better coverage in that category of treatment. And, and, and I guess you can jump in as well, Miss. Oh, I'm Calhoun. enjoying listening to Robert. I'm learning <laughs> from him. Well, I know you yeah. do this as well, and you direct people to, to search, and, and I think one of the things that you mentioned on the last program was that a lot of companies are going after people, getting them to sign up. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that you mentioned, it's important to find out what's in those coverages mm -hmm. that they have before you just say so, or whether if they just sign you up for uh, a coverage, is that the best company to be with, with where those people are in life? Mm -hmm. Well, what, the main thing that I mentioned on last time was to make sure that the doctors that you are selecting mm -hmm. are under the plan that you want to choose and the medications are under the plans. Um, but you definitely, as Robert would agree, have to do your homework uh, to research and that's where Robert comes in uh, handy. And you said you were real, real busy today with your first, sec first full day of uh, Medicaid. So having to understand if your doctors are covered, for example, for the procedures that you want, or the dentist in this case. Um, 
is under the plan. Yeah, and, Go ahead. and also you had mentioned um, there are new tools available also for consumers. One, uh, there is a uh, called a What's Covered Medicare app that's mm. it's free. Say that again. Uh, it's called What's Covered. It's just a Medicare app, yep. and it just talks about. Uh, it's from uh, the Medicare, uh, the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services. Anyone can load it, uh, either on Android or Apple, and it covers uh, <coughs> original Medicare, which is part again part A and B. Again, part A is for. Uh, the hospital coverage and B is for the doctor. So it's, it's, it's a convenient and, and handy app to cover. Let me ask you, the Medicare app, is that the same as the books that are being mailed out now? Because most people who receive Medicare Part A and B <coughs> are receiving that Medicare uh, booklet for 2020. So the app would have some of the same information? That's correct. Uh huh. That's, that's exactly yeah. right. It, it does, because it's from the same source. Yeah. From the Center for Medicaid and, Med and, and Medicaid. Most people who are listening who have Medicare Part A and B have probably received that, mm -hmm. that book, uh, details about the different things that are going on in Medicare and how to understand uh, the policies and the plans. Yeah, it's mandatory for, for them to receive that book if they're in the plan. Mm -hmm. uh, but here, and, and I'm glad you mentioned that because the, the actual app, of course, has to be loaded from a smartphone, but it has, it's from the same source, so it has some of the same, same information. But, but how convenient, though, in mm -hmm. case you can't get to the book, mm -hmm. um, you can download it and scroll through, or a family member can scroll through with specific things they're looking for mm -hmm. that they can get on a smartphone. Now, would they find this app like at the Google store? They'll find it at, at the Apple Store or at the uh, what you call the Google Store. Okay. Uh, that um, the uh, the Android Store is the same thing. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get confused with the uh, the terminology, but yeah, yes. Sure. But it's called Medicare. What's covered? It, it's called What's covered. What's covered? Yeah. It, yeah. What's covered? Medicare. That's what it's called. Oh, what's okay. Covered. So Medicare Slogan. comes after. So what's covered? Medicare, which means they can actually go to uh, whatever uh, search engine they have, download that app. And, and be able to scroll through the same information that the book has, but it's readily in front of their face. Mm -hmm. uh, that good. if they're out of town somewhere, they may not have yeah. access to the book. Book That's pretty phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Wow. I'm sorry, you were gonna say some more stuff. Please well, you me. mentioned something about um, procedures. And uh, one thing that is new is procedures can cost, uh, whether it's heart surgery or a transplant, uh, historically, it's been a, uh, a secret what that might cost. Mm. So what what the government has done now there's um, there's a location you can go to to get some idea how much procedures might cost in your area, whether it's a, a hip replacement or uh, heart surgery. Uh, before it was a it was a big mystery. So uh, that's new on uh, Medicare.gov, which is the federal uh, site Medicare.gov. Uh, you can you can actually get some idea what a procedure might cost. Wow, mm. wow. Where before it was and a big it was this, a big this secret. This is new. So what they're it, it appears that what they're doing is 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 trying to inform people prior. Apparently, you know, there've probably been some issues that once people had have had some things done, it has just been really really crazy, and to be able to cover that to provide the information prior to any procedure. Sounds like what you're saying is an asset to help people before doing those uh, choices or um, procedures. Yeah, exactly. It's just giving the consumer more power to get information in advance right. so That's that they I'm won't uh, be uh, totally surprised mm -hmm. when they see uh, what was covered and perhaps what was not covered. Wow. How awesome. What, new, what are the new things or we're on the, um, the subject of what's being introduced in the new uh, registration season? Well, uh, because there are so many uh, different plans, like I'm an independent broker with many plans, sure. and it varies by plans, but um, uh, people should also know that they can get their medical records to if they open a, a, a My Medicare account. Uh, that's not new, but that's something that uh, uh, some people take advantage of and some people aren't aware of, that they can get their, their, their medical records because they might want to share it with the uh, family members. Explain that my Medicare account. Let's uh, put that. Yeah, that's that's where you can go in and set up account with your passwords, and get uh, your the history of your your, um, your 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 medical history. And you do that through CMS, or you do that through um, the Medicare.gov, or yeah, you go through uh, Medicare.gov. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 
and that's 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 something good. Uh, excuse me to set up. Sure. Uh, also, locally, uh, you can find if people want information. There's another uh, app. Uh, people can find people like myself locally called uh, MyMedicareQuestion.com. That's also an app or site they can go to, and they can like put in uh, if they want to find uh, local help. Wow. So, for instance, if there were, um, well, I guess where I would be confused if if, if I were receiving whatever and I want a particular um, procedure done, would I call my health care provider or would I call the Medicare, basically the hotline, to find out if someone does that type of procedure and then see if they're in the network where my, my uh, plan would cover it? Well, I'll get to that. Let, let me kind of, uh, kind of back up a little because when we talk about a network, of course, we're talking about a group of doctors and health care professionals. Yeah. Uh, now, Medicare Advantage plans have networks. Now, keep in mind, the other option for Medicare, other than a Medicare Advantage all-in-one plan, uh, the other option is uh, having an original Medicare A and B, and then having a separate drug plan, and then having a Medicare supplement plan. Uh, so, so let's, you've identified four for the sake of not assuming that everyone saw the previous program Let's identify those four things that you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, again, original Medicare, typically uh, someone on Medicare will receive a red, white, and blue card, uh, usually three to four months before they turn 65. Now keep in mind, you can be on Medicare, if you were disabled under 65, you would get a Medicare card the 25th month, let's say, uh, you would you would get a Medicare card, a red, white, and blue card, the 25th month you've been disabled. So you'd be on Medicare if you understand. But typically, uh, they, they, they would get the card uh, three, to four, three to four months, about three months before they turn 65. Mm -hmm. So part A and part B, um, I, I tell people sometimes it's, uh, it's only designed to cover 80% of your healthcare needs. It was never designed to cover 100%. Mm -hmm. So I'll it's sort of like a, uh, a body with no arms, so to speak. Sure because it's missing the 20%. Uh, so to cover the 20%, you either need to have um, Medicaid, which is based on monthly income, for basically for limited income folks, or you can have it through your employer, or if you retired, you could have a plan through your employer to cover the 20%. Because unfortunately, uh, many people, uh, bankruptcy is, is too common when people don't have that 20% covered. Mm -hmm. uh, so, You'll need, uh, you have the red, white, and blue card A and B. You'll need three cards if you go down this road. You'll need uh, a, a Medicare supplement plan. Those plans covering the 20%, they generally run, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll keep it simple, they usually run uh, over $100 a month. Uh, now, and you'll need a separate drug plan. You'll need three cards. Remember earlier I talked about the all-in-one plan? Mm -hmm. that, that, that's the other road that I'm going to get back to. But uh, so original Medicare, you'd need uh, your red, white, and blue card because it's only covering 80%. Sure. Uh, you'll need uh, a Medigap or Medicare supplement, which, which is the same thing. That's going to cover your 20%. That'll pay for your co-pays. Co-pay is the amount you pay when you go to a doctor. A uh, deductible is the amount you'll pay before the insurance company start paying. Mm -hmm. So a Medicare supplement will cover that. But if, if you're on that road, you don't have drug coverage, so you need to buy a separate drug plan if you go down this road. And the average cost nationally is about $35 for um, a separate drug plan. So you'll need to carry three cards if you go down that road. Um, now the other option I mentioned earlier, because you only have one of the two options, you gotta go down one of the ro roads or the other. Mm -hmm. Now I'm talking about non-employer plans. Uh, uh, so a Medicare Advantage, no, uh, let me back up. If you have three cards, it's really, you're, you're paying in advance for your health care coverage, mm. really. Um, almost like you did when you were employed, if you're still employed, you kind of pay, you pay the monthly or weekly, whatever's coming out of your check. So you're paying in advance. Now if we switch to a Medicare Advantage, we're on option two, remember there's only two options? That's an all-in-one plan, you need one card. Mm -hmm. Because it's gonna cover A and B, it's going to cover the equivalent of the 20% that A and B does not cover. Because it's illegal for someone to try to sell you a supplement plan 
Remember the supplement plans cover 20%. Sure. It's illegal for somebody to try to sell you that if you have a Medicare Advantage all in one because it's built into the Medicare Advantage plan. Sure. So, and then it's gonna cover um, almost every plan that, uh, that I recommend will cover uh, drugs also because uh, it's an all-in-one plan on the Medicare Advantage side. So how does a person um, find out or is aware that it's an all-in-one plan with so many things of, of supplement, one supplemental uh, that covers the 20% and so on, they may think that they're getting it. How do they do? They want to call a provider and specifically state, I want an all-in-one plan? Uh, that's if they don't have, like you said, a company uh, supported um, coverage mm -hmm. from working and things like that. Well, actually they can because sometimes terminology can get uh, different professions have different terminology. She can say that, but the actual, van the, 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 the actual name is Medicare Advantage Plan. It's also called a Part C plan. So if you hear Part C and Medicare Advantage, it, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. it's yeah, it's your all-in-one plan. Okay. Um, and one way easy to recognize it, there are a lot of commercials. Lot. And when you see them talking about zero premium plans, they're talking about all-in-one plans, uh, Medicare Advantage plans. And I get asked, uh, well, how can it be a zero premium plan? So I'll talk about cost. Part A again is for in the hospital. For most people who have worked at least 10 years or their uh, significant other, a spouse have worked uh, 10 years, Part A is gonna be no cost because actually you paid for it during the working years because of Medicare tax, so really you kind of prepaid for it. Mm -hmm. But for practical purposes, it's generally no cost in most cases. As long as they've worked at least 10 years or 40 quarters, they call it. Uh, now Part B, somebody's gotta pay for Part B. Part B for, uh, Part B again pays for the, the doctors and the healthcare providers. It's kind of out, the outpatient coverage. Uh, part B, there's gonna be a cost. Uh, but some people can get it paid for, and I wanted to explain that. Excuse me. This is why this is so important to have these kind of conversations for clarity of major importance between A, B, and C. The all-in-one coverage, the, um, the difference between a supplement and things like that, because I find that people are very confused. As you said on the previous show, it's so much to know. Mm -hmm. And what we try to do at Let's Talk is make it simple so that people, when they get to a place where they actually make choices or decisions, they're informed to say that this is what I specifically want or do not want based upon the information that I got from Let's Talk. <laughs> yeah, especially now because uh, the mailboxes are being flooded Yeah, <clears throat> with all the information from all the different um, plans, different companies that have their Part C all-in-one premium plans. The television is overflowed mm -hmm. with it is. commercials and all these different things, and the people need to be educated so exactly. that they don't make a decision to change from a plan that was working for them mm -hmm. to get in one just because they said they offer you a silver sneaker contract. Exactly, and and and, and <clears throat> you hit a really interesting part, Miss Calhoun, because uh, this is why we're having a conversation, and once you finish explaining uh, about the all-in-one, um, I want to go back to folk understanding why it's important for an individual to find a plan that is working for them, because everyone's different. Oh, yeah. And every plan doesn't work for everyone. So, uh, Mr. Renfro, I'm going to let you finish, but once you've done that, let's go back and talk specifically about an individual, why they should be looking for a plan that works for them. So please continue. Okay, I had talked about the cost of Part B. Uh, somebody's gonna pay for it, and I'll tell you who that somebody is. If it's, it's really uh, income-based. Uh, By that I mean, if, if, if your income, let's say, uh, is not more than 85,000 a year, then, and you're getting Social Security, uh, this year, uh, typically people have to come out of Social Security, and that's gonna be 135.50. Mm -hmm. Now, it tends to go up a little each year and that pays for Part B. Now, if your income is at a certain level, uh, let's say as a general rule, if your income, uh, uh, let me back up, if you're married, file and joint, if your income is less than 170,000, then uh, the premium's gonna, the Part B premium's gonna be uh, 
uh, about 135.50 if it's coming out of your Social Security. Uh, now, uh, what's 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 important for uh, viewers to also know is that many people get that Part B paid for mm. uh, based on their income, and I'll just kind of keep it simple. Generally, and I'm rounding the numbers. If your income as as a single person is uh, less than about fourteen hundred dollars a month, and you don't have more than a couple thousand dollars in the bank, because there is an income test and there is a resource test. Now it does not count your home, your car, and uh, all that jewelry you maybe uh, have on while you look at this program. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, so many. What what happens is the federal government will give the state money to pay for that Part B if your income is, uh, is within that range. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so commonly I run across folks who uh, may not know that, uh, so they can find out for no cost, keep in mind no cost, they can apply and get, uh, and get the state to pay for that Part B premium, which, which uh, as I said, could be 135.50 a month, it could be more. If, they, if, if their income is real high, uh, the previous two years, then that amount's gonna be more. Mm -hmm. if they uh, had a high income of the limits. But the point is, there are Medicare savings programs based on income that will pay for that Part B premium. And it's really helpful for, for a lot of folks because they need that money that's coming out of their Social Security to Absolutely. pay for, for Part B. And many are eligible and don't know it, so I always try to get that, that right. word out as well. So when you're talking about that, you're talking about through Medicaid, um, like the qualified Medicare benefits the QMB and the SLMB, the slow, uh -huh. uh, yes. specified low uh, Medicare benefits. So regardless, whatever their uh, monthly income is, if it's within that range, the state pays for that premium. Right, there are four Medi uh, Medicare savings programs that will enable the state to pay for that premium, which is a Part B that may be coming out of there, that's typically coming out of Social Security for those who are receiving Social Security. Yeah, I had a situation the other day where the gentleman didn't pay for his Part B because he said he couldn't afford it, and he had Part A, and really Part A didn't cover anything other mm. than the, you know, the... When you're in the, the hospital. When well, you're in the right. hospital, uh, the facilities, and fortunately, open enrollment is now, but it does not kick in until the changes that they will, if they do their open enrollment now, none of this comes into effect until 2020. Yeah. Unless, so, unless they're turning 65 this year. Yeah, unless they're turning, 65, they're turning 65 this year. 65 but no, he's, he was already there. And so a lot of times people make that mistake of not getting that Part B. And then you talked about not having the Part B and not getting it, there's a penalty involved. Um, yeah. if. Uh, there, there can be a penalty if you wait too long to get Part B, but the penalty can be waived too, okay. based on uh, based on your income and whether you get uh, things like a supplemental security income or uh, supplemental security disability income. It can it can it can be waived, uh, but I'm glad you brought that up because uh, typically to enroll in Medicare, you can enroll three months before the month you turn 65. Mm -hmm. There's a seven month window. It's three months before the month you turn 65, the month you turn 65, and uh, three months after the month 65. If you don't meet that window, then you could be subject to the penalty that uh, Ms. Calhoun just referred to. And that penalty is, uh, the government uh, does that penalty, but it's for your life. <laughs> wow. Uh, so uh, let me give you an example. Well, well, yeah. yeah. Let me give you an example. And I, I've seen this happen, had this happen. Let's say someone enrolled, uh, in uh, uh, Henry's all-in-one Medicare Advantage plan. Which is a good one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and it's a zero premium plan. Mm -hmm. Okay, and let's say that they enrolled beyond that point, that seven, seven month window, mm -hmm. and let's say they waited two more years. So when they go to apply, the government's gonna de determine, depending on how long they waited, the, the government's gonna determine what the penalty is. And actually, I've seen this happen. Uh, so the client has a zero premium plan, and then they get a bill saying, I thought it was a zero premium plan. Well, it was, but you're being penalized because either you waited too long, or let's say you, you dropped a plan and uh, you didn't get in, back in it within 63 days. Wow. Uh, that's a permanent penalty imposed by the government. It's not by uh, the company. So in this case, this was one of my cases where 
Uh, the client did have a zero premium plan, but she had been out of, out of it too long. So uh, I think she wound up having to pay uh, her penalty, it was like $11 a month. <clears throat> so basically don't wait. Uh, right, the early the better. Uh, the early the better. I try to, people turning 65, I try to catch them six to nine months ahead of time. Mm -hmm. you, you mentioned that there were four, I think we were talking about Part B, and I, ho I hope I'm not saying the wrong thing. There were four ways that this can be supplemented. Was it Part the B? The Part B paid for it? Yes. The yeah, there are four different programs, that, and it's only one Man. call or one application to determine it. Uh, first, they look to see if you're eligible for Medicaid. Mm -hmm. uh, Medicaid. And uh, in, in Ohio, uh, and I'm rounding the numbers, uh, if your income is not more than uh, about 800 a month, then you're eligible for Medicaid. So then uh, typically you're eligible for extra benefits and the state is definitely going to pay for that Part B so you won't see it. Then if your income is over that amount, let's say in Ohio it's about uh, not more than 1100 a month, mm -hmm. they're going to look to see uh, you're what's called eligible for a qualified Medicare beneficiary. That's another program that where the state will pay for that Part B premium. Mm -hmm. And then they'll look for uh, the next level, which is called, we call it SLIMB, it stands for Specified Low Income Medicare mm -hmm. Beneficiary. There's another income level, so that's the, that's the third program. Uh, and then there's another program called Qualified Individual. That could be a working disabled individual, and that income level is about 1400 a month mm -hmm. uh, for single. So if you're eligible for any of those, those are the programs, the Medicare Savings programs, where it, as long as you apply for them, and it's no cost to apply, uh, the state is going to pay for that Part B premium, so that would put money back in your pocket. And this would be through Job and Family Services? How would they apply? It could be through Job and Family Services. It can be to a very uh, skilled and talented folks like Ms. Leslie Calhoun. Uh, it can be, there is a, there is a Medicaid hotline uh, mm -hmm. uh, that, that can be called uh, for, for Ohio. Mm -hmm. uh, so there, there, there are multiple ways. Also, some folks in uh, what's called fairly qualified health care centers, those are centers that are primarily funded by the federal government. Oftentimes, there are people in those centers who can complete the application that, for yeah, you. That's what I yeah, do there. Yeah, right. Uh, well, one good thing to know, too, about when you do apply for those, uh, those different ones, they require a bank statement. So the persons, you know, a lot of times people get kind of shaky when the, concerned when they have to present a bank statement. Right. They always want to know whether or not you have life insurances. I never understood why they wanted that. Uh, I guess for the cash value right. that's associated. That, that, that's the reason they want it. Okay, the cash because remember, value. remember, there's a resource test. That's why they want to know. Okay, that falls into the resource test. But the QMB, uh, the Qualified Medicare uh, Beneficiaries, does pay for the co-pays. It pays for the premiums and also um, the premium, the monthly premium, and also some of the uh, out-of-pocket um, expenses. And that is a sleeping dog. A lot of people don't understand. They don't ask those, uh, well, I guess they don't, the government won't tell you right out. You have to be able to listen to programs like this to find out about it or do your research and, um, and get those assistance. The other thing, it makes you eligible for extra benefits. So all of these companies, Medicare companies, they have different plans at different levels. To stay competitive, all of them have what we call zero premium plans, and that's just what it is. A zero Say that again, state is what? Uh, 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 to stay competitive with yes. their competitors, all of, them, they, all of them offer plans where there's a zero monthly premium plan. Here we're talking about the all-in-one the Medicare Advantage plans. Sure. Now. So, uh, uh, so to stay competitive, they have to offer it, but they also offer other plans. They might offer plans that where you, you pay a monthly premium, uh, but related to uh, what Ms. Leslie said, if you are a qualified Medicare beneficiary, if you're eligible for a Medicare savings program, often you're eligible to get one of their plans with more benefits. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, I'll give an example. Most of the plans will offer um, what's called an over-the-counter monthly allowance for uh, non-medical related items, vitamins, uh, Diabetes supplies, mm -hmm. um, um, landslips, yeah, yeah, a whole lot of things. Yeah, all of things. They'll give you a monthly amount. They'll give you. They'll allow a monthly amount, so you can just or you get a catalog. You can order uh, from the catalog. Some plans allow you to go to certain retailers, uh, and you can use. You you can uh, 
uh, certain large retailers, which I won't mention because it varies by plan. Certainly. And, and they'll give you a, a card, and let's say you have an allowance of um, $300 every three months, sure. which, is, which is not uncommon. So you can go to certain large retailers and, and everything, as long as it's not on your prescription and it's health related, there are many items that you can get. Wow. And uh, it's really helpful to people because many have been paying out of pocket for vitamins or other things that they didn't sure. get a prescription for. Sure. And um, some of the newer plans even offer uh, some newer benefits. They might, might offer uh, fitness items like uh, Fitbits, Garmin's. Wow. And these are included in the plan. There's no extra cost. Mm -hmm. uh, wow. So based on your situation, you may be eligible for a plan that will give you a, a higher a monthly amount or quarterly amount to buy other items. Wow. And again, they find out um, qualification through and how. Through, I, I keep hearing job and family services, which may not be in this case. How would they find out if they're eligible to receive that extra plan? Uh, well, a couple of ways. They can call, um, uh, if they know a Medicare broker like myself, uh, they can also call, uh, the state has, uh, every state has what's called a uh, senior health insurance uh, program that's, that's no cost. Mm -hmm. They can call uh, the senior health insurance program, they can find out. It's, it's, it's funded by the government, it's in every state, even Ohio. Mm -hmm. um, they can find out that. Uh, uh, some people want uh, the personal approach, then they can ask their friends or something who maybe who, who they're working with. Uh, and they can also call Medicare. Mm -hmm. uh, they can call Medicare as well. Wow, how interesting. Ms. Calhoun? And Google, and then, you know, the old computer, right. they can get there. But, you know, I, I'm just so concerned about this season and what uh, the people that are uh, eligible for the Part C uh, Medicare Advantage plans, not to make any decisions. Uh, that I'm, I just want to keep drilling that because all of the, the paperwork and all of the mailings that they get, I'm sure people might get 10, 15 pieces of mail uh, every week during this season and before about change to this plan, zero uh, premiums, five dollar co-pays or, or whatever it is and they need to do their homework before making any decisions at all don't say yay or nay don't even pretend like you want to say yes because if they're on the other line and they're thinking that you're in agreement with what they're saying they'll switch you over and you'll find yourself not being um covered under the p position that you had uh, been with for uh, some time and I shared uh, in our last program how I spoke with the gentleman, and I, I was so infuriated with what they had done, and uh, come to find out, as I shared with him, it might not be illegal, but it's, it definitely is predatory. And so, and our elderly people don't understand, and some of the younger ones either don't understand the necessity of seeking out help. It's mm -hmm. okay to ask if you don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, especially with the different little programs, the uh, programs that say you can be, get a gym membership if you join this particular thing, or you'll get a free uh, I igloo uh, ice <laughs> carrier. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's something really simple. And then they've changed and they've, they've just disrupted their whole um, insurance plans. But and, and the doctor's not in the network. And wow. the doctor's not in the network, and that is, you know, that right there. So, uh, so, so the bottom line is, is that we know that this is the um, season for uh, registering or, or changing mm -hmm. your provider. You're saying before you really fully entertain those people, basically don't say yes to anything. Don't say. Until you have, and I guess you can jump in on this because if they're on the assumption that you are even interested in, they can actually change you to... Oh. What their plan is that they're calling for, and it may not be something that you really wanted. You may have just been listening to whatever sales pitch they were giving about what they covered and things like that. But you want to be careful in your conversation with those particular people 
to make sure that you don't give any indication unless, of course, you are going to choose that plan that you're interested in. I, and you're, I aware of, yeah, you're aware of it. And so I will start the conversation. I have no intentions of making any decisions at this point. I'll listen to what you have to say. And I will get back with you. Now you can carry on and talk. But you, and most of them have recorded phone calls, as was the case with mine when I did the investigation and find out, well, we listened to the call and the person did let them know that this is what they were going to do. I'm saying, well, you're talking to an 86 year old person who doesn't understand and you're talking fast and all that. But by the time I threatened to call the Department of Insurance and all that other kind of stuff <laughs> on him, he said, <laughs> he wiped it. He went, well, 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 give us a couple of, t you know, give us a couple of times to a yell because people don't know. And I tell all the people that I come with, don't do anything. And I'm sure you'd say the same thing yeah. to them. Don't make any changes. Well, people re are receiving calls all, uh, uh, that, first of all, with Medicare, people shouldn't be calling you, but they will call you because they're supposed to have your permission before they call you. Mm. And they're supposed to have a record of permission before they will call you. Mm -hmm. But they, they will do it anyway. It, it, it's illegal. That, with Medicare, I'm just talking about Medicare, uh, they, it, that's what call, there, there's what's called permission to contact. They're supposed to have your, your permission to contact them. But people, you know how some folks and organizations are, they'll try to work around uh, the, the legalities of, of the law. Um, uh, the other thing, uh, this is a good time to have your plan reviewed. To be clear, um, you don't have your plan, as long as you keep, as long as part A and B is paid for, your plan will automatically renew. Now I'm talking about the all-in-one Medicare Advantage plan. Mm -hmm. It'll automatically renew. But it's a good time to review it um, because one of the things that happen is on your, an all-in-one plan again includes your prescriptions. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, doctors can go in and out of a network and uh, prescription plans don't cover all medications. Mm -hmm. uh, let me give you an example. They have to by law cover basically at least two medications in each category. So take for something expensive like insulin. You may be on insulin and last year, that brand of insulin may have been on your plan. This year, the, um, uh, the pharmacy benefit manager company, they decided, well, we want to move to a cheaper form of insulin, and it's not on your plan anymore. Now, they're not going to leave you standing because they have to make sure you have a 30-day window to, to, to have the drugs that you need. But that's a, that's a reason where it's a good idea to review your plan. So you don't have to review yourself. It can be reviewed by... Uh, by phone, like I mentioned, Ohio State Senior Health Insurance Plan. I review plans for people, whether or not they do business uh, with me, because I try to be a resource. But uh, you don't want to generally first. You don't want to go to your pharmacist and find out that your medication has jumped up, which it can happen anytime. But more, it's not even on your plan anymore. Hmm. And you said, which we know you're the broker, but who else would review the plans for you to make sure that it's the best one for you? Um, like I said, an individual broker or the Ohio Senior Health Insurance Ohio uh, Senior uh, Health Insurance uh, uh, program will we'll, we'll, we'll review them for you. And um, uh, because a, a review, this is how uh, I do a review of a plan. I first I ask, who is your primary care physician? Mm -hmm. I ask, do you have any specialists? The reason I'm asking this is because you're in a network plan, it's a Medicare Advantage plan. I want to make sure you're in a network. And then um, I worked in pharmacy for a while. I'm not a pharmacist. I'm not a pharmacy technician. I just worked. I, I need to know more about uh, legal drugs. Sure. <laughs> so I so I work. So uh, it's not mandatory for you to share your medications with someone. But if you're comfortable working with that person, I'll ask them for their either their list or sometimes I'll look at their actually prescription bottles. But that's up to them. Sure. Because I want to know if their medications are on the drug list because all medications are, aren't on all drug lists. Uh, I'll ask them, what, what hospitals do you prefer? Uh, wh where do you get your, your medications from? Because I want to know a picture, because I, I want them to, to, to if, I want to know if their plan's okay where it is, or if something jumps out uh, that they do need to change. Mm -hmm. And before you go on, would you list the three top things to make sure that they're doctors? Doctors and specialists. Uh, the doctors, yeah, the primary care doctors and the specialists, and the medications. All, there's a lot of other ones that are important, mm -hmm. but to make sure that those 
three are, are especially come because if you're going to a cardiologist, that's a serious specialist that you want to make sure, yeah. you know, that you're dealing with. And doctors well, can come in and out of network, and they will. And many doctors are retiring. The doctors can come out of it with no notice. Wow. So uh, your doctor, I, I'm running across more and more people who said, well, my doctor is retiring or, uh, or, or retired. Um, but uh, the point is, doctors can come in and out of network. The show's over? No. No, but get, just please continue. Uh, so so, so that's let's, important enough. Before we do it, before we leave there, let's give the con information to contact you. Yeah. Information. They can reach you at? Uh, they can reach, reach me directly at 513-652-7354. Uh, uh, One more time, please. 513-652-7354. Uh, uh, they can also go to the site mymedicarequestion.com, mymedicarequestion.com, and they can put in my name and, and they can request an appointment that way as well. Or download the app, What's Covered Medicare, right? Yeah. Well, th 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 these are two different apps. The What's Covered app is, the, is like the federal Medicare app. Uh, MyMedicareQuestion.com is more like a local app for uh, brokers in the area. Mm -hmm. mm. Wow. But it has, a, it has a wealth of information uh, wow. on it. Well, wow. and Ms. Calhoun, what's information that you could be contacted at in case they have some additional questions? Please? If they have questions, they can call me at area code 513-389-8427. 513-389-8427 at the Crossroad Health Center located at Liberty and Vine and Over the Rhine. And one more time, please, just in case you missed it. 513-389-8427. 513-389-8427. Wow. You, you <clears throat> mentioned that there is, one more time, that the uh, to be able to enroll or renew or change your plan, those dates are again, please? From October the 15th to December the 7th. That's every year, and that's why people get a, a lot of mail and a lot of contacts. Sure. Now there's a new period that just started uh, last year. From January the 1st to March the 31st, you can only switch a Medicare Advantage plan. Let's say you got into a plan and you heard about another one. But it can't be advertised. Uh, I mean, the companies can't market that you can change. What, say the dates again, March? Okay. From, from January the 1st to March the 31st, Let's say you got into a plan, and for some reason, uh, the schedule start January the 1st. It's going to start January the 1st. Uh, and uh, you found something about it that you didn't like, or your doctor, you found something, or, or you heard about something better. You, you have a, you have a one-time chance to switch between January 1st and March 31st. Wow. Uh, that, that's, that's new. Wow. Wow. But okay. companies cannot market during that time, because really they don't want a lot of people Change that time because you just had open enrollment. Wow. Okay, so this is for people that are just on the stand. They're not getting the extra help. No, this is for people who picked a plan. Let's say they picked a plan between October the 15th and December, and December. 7th. Mm -hmm. and then they say, oh, uh, for whatever reason, uh, I don't like I, this. this plan had these benefits that I'm eligible for, so now I want this plan. Okay. Th they have a one time chance to switch between that. That's so good. That's, that, that's, 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 or go back to original Medicare. Don't you think that's a good thing? Yeah, because they didn't have that. Uh, yeah, before. that's a good option. I know one of the options that changed from last year was where it, for the people that were getting extra help through um, Medicaid could change their their uh, Part C plan every month. And now that has been changed that they can only do it once a quarter, once every three months. Yeah, during the which, first three quarters of the year. That, that, that's yeah, a good point. Which, which limits them, but the change that you're just speaking about now, when a person makes a decision and then they f realize that there's something else better out there, well, that's, that's kind of good to hear what the government is doing yeah. there. So. Also, she mentioned the term extra help. You'll hear that term. That only applies to reducing the cost of your medication. So extra help only, only applies to reducing your medication. So... Um, I'm trying to keep it simple. If you're single, because they're different, there's also an income and resource test for extra help. Sure. Too. A uh, single is about mm -hmm. 1,500 a month. If you don't make more than 1,500 a month, then you're eligible to get your uh, medications costs limited and reduced. Now, many people are, are automatically uh, enrolled into extra help mm -hmm. uh, based on their income. Uh, and the way 
the easiest way to know, ch generally, if they aren't paying more than um, $9 for their most expensive medication, they're probably already getting extra help. Mm. Wow. And that is for their most expensive medication. Wow. And that's just a general, I just want to give a general idea. Wow. Mm. What are, um, I love the introduction of some of the new things that are coming and love the information about from January to March, love the dates to enrollment, open enrollment. Is there, and I want to make sure we're covering because you're such an excellent guest. I want to make sure I'm not having so much conversation that I'm missing some things that you wanted to inform us about that you're aware of that also is new in when it comes to Medicare. Okay, well, I do want to share some things that Medicare doesn't cover. Uh, which I think is important, and okay. it's really not new. I think the biggest thing uh, is that Medicare doesn't cover what's called long-term care. Uh, long-term care is what people typically need over a long period of time. It's usually uh, many services aren't medical. Uh, actually, tonight, I just left a, um, a senior building uh, because I had um, my aunt was moved to uh, a senior building for some skilled nursing care. Skilled nursing facility is a facility, typically, if, you, if you've been in a hospital for a while, let's say at least three days, uh, and you're not able to go back home, mm -hmm. commonly you'll move to a skilled nursing facility. So my, so my aunt was moved to that. But in another part of that facility, uh, I, had, uh, I saw another, a client of mine who had a, long, a separate long-term care insurance policy, uh, and that pays uh, that pays for her stay there because she lives there. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but I just want to mention uh, that's one of the biggest things that Medicare doesn't cover. And when I'm talking about Medicare, I'm talking about original Medicare, I'm talking about mm -hmm. A and B. Because mm -hmm. remember some of these all-in-one Medicare, they cover some, uh, some extra things. But mm -hmm. I'm talking about what original me Medicare doesn't cover. It doesn't cover most dental plans, uh, most dental coverage. It doesn't cover um, vision. Uh, cosmetic surgery. Uh, I wish you did cover that. There'd be a lot of people th th yeah. <laughs> looking. Eighty-nine year olds look yeah. like seventeen year olds, but <laughs> yeah. it, it <laughs> doesn't cover routine uh, foot care either. So here I'm, I'm drawing the distinctions between original Medicare versus the all-in-one Medicare Advantage plan because Medicare Advantage plans do cover some of these things. Mm. But uh, the long-term care is, is, is a big one. And I mention that because my client that was in one part of the same facility, which of course I won't mention, she had bought a long-term care plan, a separate insurance policy years ago. And actually in her case, she and her husband. And I can tell you that in that case, that facility, I know from experience, was about $10,000 a month. Wow. And were it not for that, her, her family told me, had they not bought that years ago, uh, they wouldn't be able to afford to stay there. I'm just mentioning that to let you know that that type of thing, Medicare doesn't cover it. A lot of people think. So are that those it does. plans still available now, the long term? Because I haven't heard much about yeah, that. Yeah, they're still available. They are not inexpensive. Uh, and uh, they are difficult to, uh, not difficult, but you really have to qualify for them, uh, yeah. he you know, health, health wise. You don't have to be mm -hmm. in perfect health, but yeah, they're, st they're, they're still available. Um, but I just want to mention, because many people think the most Medicare would cover at the most is uh, 100 days. And it usually doesn't cover that much. That, that just means if you've been in the hospital, you went to a skilled nursing facility, sure. and you're still on the Medicare part. But that's the absolute most. But there are people in these facilities for years. Wow. And so mm -hmm. what, what, what usually happens, unfortunately, is that if they have significant means, they may be able to pay for it. If not, they're going to have to basically spend their spend their assets down, and they'll wind up going on Medicaid. Wow! And they'll have to, so they really need to do some planning in it. But they'll, they'll they'll have to, and what they're allowed to keep is so minimal that uh, it's it's almost laughable, actually. You, because, because you so mentioned minimal. a few minutes ago. You said routine foot care under original Medicare is not covered under A and B. So you have individuals who. Uh, most diabetics have issues right. with their feet. Mm -hmm. Right. And so routine, like clipping of the toenails, yes. are not covered under... Under original Medicare, only if it's related to something that's been diagnosed. Now, it's going to be covered under the all-in-one Medicare Advantage plan. Yeah, I got that part. It, it, yeah. But as far as 
a Part B plan, having a, a, a specialist, a podiatrist, podiatrists are not covered under? Well, it really depends on what's been diagnosed. Okay. But I was just saying that a rule generally, it, wow. it, it won't be, but that it really is depends what it is. Wow. And wow. you're exactly right, but di 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 diabetics, um, you know, taking care of the feet and everything is especially important. Absolutely. It's, uh, under the circumstances of what, if it's not taken care of, what can actually happen? Um, you know, mention about the feet, uh, is, do you think it's exclusively just for people with those medical issues such as diabetes or because some elderly cannot manage or care for their feet either? Would they have access to those type of coverages or would it have to be prescribed? Uh, no, they, uh, they would have access. Typically they would have it in a, in a Medicare Advantage plan, but it depends some, uh, some part of Part B can cover some of it, but it depends mm -hmm. exactly what, what it is. Sure. Um, I mean, you're going to know someone's 89 years old, it's very difficult <laughs> for them to get down and cut right. their toenails. Right. Certainly it would be an advantage to have a, a, a plan that they have an appointment every two weeks just to make sure that it's done healthy and safe. Well, I go to um, uh, senior buildings a lot, and uh, many of them have a podiatrist come around uh, every other month or something and they sort of line up to see them. Mm -hmm. uh, wow. Because, I mean, many of the, many of the Medicare Advantage plans also, uh, one of the fastest growing benefits is transportation. Because mm. before, they would give you all these benefits and a lot of people Couldn't don't drive, yeah. uh, particularly at night. Is it dark yet? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can dig it. <laughs> uh, uh, some, and some don't drive uh, at night. Wow. Um, which, is, which is understandable sometimes because you know your limits. So. The fastest growing benefit in Medicare Advantage plans is adding transportation Beca mm. because they used to only be in plans where people had, were dual eligible for Medicare and Medicaid, but now they're, they're common. Don't mean to cut you off. Give the number one more time, both of you, please, Mr. Okay, uh, I can be reached directly at 513-652-7353. Uh, one more time, please. 513-652-7353. Ms. Calhoun, please. Uh, I can reach it, Erico, 513-389-8427. 513-389-8427. So you guys, that you, you have it. You have the numbers that if you need to reach these specific guests, you can get additional information uh, pertaining to you and your type of plans and things like that to make sure you make good choices. You've heard it. There are a lot of uh, almost like as Ms. Um, Ms. Calhoun said, predatory uh, companies that are trying to vie for your your business to make sure you go with this one, but it may not work for you. So it's important for you to get information to be able to make sure that whatever plan you do choose it's going to be beneficial to you and where you are in your medical history and your life period. So um, write these numbers down. I'm going to go back to them one more time because it's important for you to have the information in case you have a question. You, we talked about the apps that you can download to be able to get more and more information. I tell folk, people say information is power. I want to be very clear. Information is not powerful if it's not applied. We're giving you information so you can apply it and say that I got it from Let's Talk. Just okay, you. I need to so say yes. this real quickly. Not only are we in Medicare open enrollment, Marketplace open enrollment begins December the 7th, uh, November the 1st until December 15th. December the 15th. And then also Medicaid open enrollment for Medicare, Medicaid um, uh, Advantage plans will start. It started October the 1st and it ends up November. Talk about the things that mean so much to you and me. Let's talk. Talk about the things that mean so much.